So last week I made a video about budget 300 amp hour batteries. Now these ones cost more, but will they actually be better? Because right now the competition is tough. Some of the budget batteries are really nice. So today we're gonna test them and rip them apart and find out. The first off, the EcoWorthy, when I was doing my first review, I had to remove this one from my video because it was over $500, but now it's dropped to 420. And the VAT here is $479, but this one has Bluetooth and this one doesn't. If I were to get a vat here with bluetooth it's 560 dollars which is why i chose this one for the comparison now the first thing i tested was the capacity and in the 0.2c rate test the eco worthy pulled 292.2 amp hours and then i did the test again with more current i pulled 200 amps with my new machine and I pulled 292.0 amp hours. And then I tested the Vatier, and usually this company pulls really good numbers. And in a 0.2C rate test, I pulled 322.6 amp hours, which is really good. And then I increased the current like I did with the EcoWorthy, and I pulled 292.2 amp hours. But this was a disconnect, so I think I got over temperature with this one. But I couldn't believe that we got 292 with three tests with two different machines and all the tests were like a week apart but we can use these numbers to determine the cost per kilowatt hour so it's not as cheap as a budget battery but it's pretty good for the money next i tested the overcurrent protection and i got this one up to 400 amps and then it would instantly disconnect but if i did 220 amps it would disconnect after a few seconds which is good this is fantastic this is a time delay and it's good if you're trying to run motors like a trolling motor but this one doesn't have it at all. I pulled 800 amps from these terminals. That is a lot of current. And it did not disconnect until it heated up. So this does not have overcurrent protection, but has over temperature protection, which is not good. That will stress the BMS and that should not be triggered unless something's going horribly wrong. Next, the EcoWorthy is the cheapest smart battery around, but it doesn't have all the problems like all the other smart batteries. If you buy a Rododo, a Renogy, or a Watt cycle, and you connect it in parallel with another battery, they will not cycle at the same state of charge. Sometimes I can get one down to 30% before the other one at 100% will start to discharge as well. And that's a major issue and these do not have that. So they must be using a different BMS than everyone else. And something I noticed is the Bluetooth range on this is insane. I can check it from the building next to my house. I don't think I've ever had a Bluetooth go that far, not even my headphones or anything else I have in my house. So whatever they're doing here is different than the other manufacturers. Also, the last version of this model did not have Bluetooth. Bluetooth. So whenever they add features, usually it's going to have problems, but this one didn't. And the older model was very reliable and lots of people bought that and I did open it up. I don't think the build quality is as good as Watt Cycle, but these are super reliable and they're using different hardware than everyone else. Anyways, that's enough talking. Let's open these things up and see what's inside. <laughs> These are both really nice. It's almost as if you get what you pay for. And the Vatier sells, these are 314 amp hours, but they advertise 300. They're like the only company I know that does that. And this is what the budget battery should look like, a protected balance lead, extra large main supply conductors, and a temperature sensor that's glued to the cell. Also, the cells are not welded. The only other company that was doing that was SOK with their server rack battery and they're gone now. But the configuration of the cells in the BMS is just like a dumb fume. It's just a higher quality dumb fume. And this is looking pretty good. We don't have large solder joints. We have screw terminals and they're glued. And this looks very similar to the dumb fume BMS, but it's actually smaller. Now we're charging with 10 amps. Perfect. So I'm impressed with the build quality, but I think it's pretty expensive. Now time for the eco-worthy. Okay, this is nice. This has to be the cheapest smart battery with metal cell holders, a massive BMS, and huge conductors, and huge bus bars. Everything on this thing is overbuilt. And then they slap this on diagonally. How ugly. And this is hard to show on camera, so I have to cut it up some more. So we've got some red flags, guys. First off, the overpressure relief valves are covered. Next, this was not glued to the cell. It was taped to an overpressure relief valve. 
and then we have a thermal switch. I was expecting better from EcoWorthy. Everything else is fantastic, like the cell holders and these cables. Something that would be silly is if they had both of these because they didn't program this one to be low and high temperature sensing. And they had to add this one for the high temperature, so we'll test that next. First, the low temp test. What? And the temperature sensor wires are not protected when they go through this hole in the steel case. In a high vibration environment, that could actually rub through these. So yeah, another demerit point for EcoWorthy. I cannot trip it. I've been trying everything. Not looking good for EcoWorthy right now. Oh, there we go. The ice pack actually triggered it. Uh-oh and it's melting, so this is not a high temp sensor. That's why they added this one. Why don't you change your software so you can pay less in hardware costs? That's so strange to me. They know better, this company's pretty smart. I don't understand this. And gluing this stuff to the overpressure relief valve? Come on, guys. I've never seen you guys screw up like this. This is weird. So hopefully they fix this fast. I was expecting better. This company just came out with a UL listed battery and it's certified under California. So seeing these wires going through a hole made out of steel without a grommet was pretty disappointing. But the durability and the metal cell holders, I like to see this, so that's a plus. So as always, pros and cons to both, but the Vatier, I like this design. If they could lower the price of this and have the same build quality, they would absolutely dominate because there's nothing here I dislike. But this one doesn't have overcurrent protection, I almost forgot. So no matter how nice this looks, it's missing a key safety feature. If you want to use one of these, you need to add a terminal fuse. And these are cheap and very good insurance for these cheap Chinese batteries, so throw one on these no matter what. So even though these are the expensive name brand ones, they still have issues. Now compared to the budget batteries, are these worth the money? My $350 dump fume battery, I'm cycling hard every single day with my load tester to test circuit breakers. And it has overcurrent protection, which this one doesn't, which is literally $130 more, and it doesn't have it, but the dump fume does have it. And the dump fume's working just fine. But some people say that the dump fumes, sometimes they have 280 amp hour cells. So it really doesn't matter who you buy these from. Even the name brand more expensive ones still have issues. And the budget ones are not so bad. That's why everyone likes them. That's why they get such good reviews. But not all of them. Some of them don't even pull full capacity and they have really bad cells and really bad BMSs. So yeah, check out my other videos if you wanna learn more. So I'll have links down below for all of them and the budget batteries. I hope you like this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.